you know, the Bible says that um, you're a slave to whatever you obey and that you uh, that Jesus saves us from being a slave to sin. And I know for me personally, it became all encompassing where that's what I was living for. That's what was ruling my life. I would wake up and I'd be like, what do I got to do to get high today? You know, and you you put that above everything else, your your morals, your values. Um, you get once you get that in your mind that that's what you're going to do. Almost nothing can stop you. Welcome to another Calvary Conversations. I'm Sean LePage, the Ministry Studies Chair and Associate Professor here at Calvary University. And uh, I am thrilled to introduce you to my three guests today. Um, we are intent here in, in, through this podcast to encourage conversations about life from the biblical worldview. And one of the subjects that I have uh, personally um, been very interested in over the years is uh, the idea of addiction. Now, um, I have personally worked in uh, a ministry that helped uh, homeless families get housing, and we didn't directly uh, work with uh, um, helping people recover from their addictions, but we dealt with a lot of addiction, a lot of homelessness, in my view, uh, is the result of uh, addiction. And, uh, you know, just I, I love that ministry. I loved the people that we we uh, dealt with and that we we tried to house. And and uh, it was it was a great experience for me. And I, I learned a lot about um, the the power and the and the just the devastation that addiction can bring to to individuals and families and children and so forth. So uh, I'm really excited about this conversation because each of my guests, uh, uh, Tim Challey, Richard Barham, and, and Kelly Bolin, all have uh, 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 their own unique stories and their own connections to the, the ministry of uh, addiction recovery. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to try to introduce them. Um, uh, by the way, welcome, everybody. I'm glad, I'm glad, so glad that you've joined us today. Um, but I'm going to let each one of them introduce themselves and just tell a little bit about their own story as well as their experience in working with uh, addiction recovery. And I'm going to go with ladies first. It's old fashioned, I know, but uh, I'm, I'm going to go with that. And I'm going to ask uh, Kelly to introduce yourself. All right. So um, I work with women that are transitioning. So it's a transitional home. They come in out of um, either active addiction or through, we get a lot of applicants through like the jails and the prisons. Um, and what we do is, is we, we center in on, on the, the restoration and reconciliation that Jesus brings. And we help them with like life skills, such as, um, like balancing a checkbook, getting your social security card, um, and, and getting a foundation, um, for them to start a relationship with, with, with Jesus so that everything else can kind of fall into place. Um, I actually graduated the program three years ago. I came in, um, I was in jail and um, in, cause I was in my active addiction and finally had an end of myself. And I got a hold of the director and was like, you know, I, I, I think I'm ready. <laughs> and uh, she took me in, I went through the program, learned a lot. Um, I knew a little bit about who Jesus was, but just getting that that solid foundation in uh, really helped. And so today I get to go back in and, and help the women that are coming in and, and give the me too's and um, get to take them alongside. So it's pretty cool. That's a, it's a great story, Kelly. And I, I just want to add that I, I met you uh, through a class at Calvary University that I'm teaching you. You're one of my students in that class. And and so uh, it, it's a it's a it's a it's great to hear your story, to hear uh, that you've not only um, come to a, at least some level of, of addiction. And we're going to talk about that, that um, that idea of whether uh, someone is 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 ever fully recovered and that kind of thing in a little bit. But um, you've obviously come to a place where you're helping others uh, in their re recovery. And I think that's just a, a beautiful, wonderful thing. And, and so, uh, Kelly, you're from where? Where are you serving? I'm in Idaho, actually. So little uh, town, kind of 
like three hours from Boise, the capital. OK, and is it OK for you to tell us the uh, ministry that you're serving with? Yeah, it's called Minikaja Transitional Living. OK, it's a yeah, it's it's really cool. Great. Well, thank you for joining me today. Richard, would you please uh, tell us a little bit about your story and 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 your uh, experience in in helping with uh, helping others with recovery? Uh, OK, um, so, yeah, I mean, I've really I've dealt with um, addiction all of my life, you know, um, as a teenager, I started uh, smoking pot and it basically it was like an everyday thing. And um, and then I went to a phase where I was drinking and then I eventually uh, was became a meth addict and I was living on the streets. I had nothing just the clothes on my back and a pipe in my pocket. And it just became all consuming to where that's all that I was living for, you know? And that's when really where God found me. And I remember I was laying in the doorway one day and I just started praying and I said, God, this is not the life that I want. And I just got up and I left the area that I was in and Everything that I prayed for, a home and a job and a family, God has provided in the last five or six years now. And Amen. Um, I ended up at this place. It was a sober living home uh, called In His Name. And um, after going through the program myself, uh, uh, I became the assistant director there. And they wanted to open another home uh discipleship home and so i was preparing to do that but then the the plans changed and um, i'm planning to when i graduate to open some place of my own that um brings people in and and gets them kind of uh over their addictions and cleans up and then um training them to be missionaries or evangelists or whatever god has called them to do um, so that's what I'm planning to do with my uh, education. Um, I've been involved in many different uh, types of recovery programs, Celebrate Recovery and uh, some behavioral health centers and uh, uh, transitional living homes. Hmm. Well, I'll, I'll mention also that I met Richard um, uh, through Calvary and he he is also one of my students, you're pretty close to graduating, right, Richard? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking May 6th, I should be graduating. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for you, man. And uh, thanks for sharing your story. Uh, where are you located, Richard? Uh, I'm in Colorado Springs. OK. OK. Um, and uh, again, thanks for for sharing your story. Uh, Tim, would you introduce yourself as well? I, I just recently met Tim. Um, am I right, Tim, that you're a Calvary grad? Is I am. I am. OK, uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and and uh, your your history, your 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 involvement in in recovery ministry. Sure. Um, by the way, thank you, Kelly and Richard, for sharing uh, your stories and thank you for your transparency and honesty. Um, I I don't have an addiction story. Uh, I was born in a Bible church. I like to share with uh, an IFCA church and an, I, I had IFCA diapers on me. And uh, <laughs> I'll probably get back to that someday. We all will. But uh, <laughs> um, but I grew up and I have been involved in ministry all of my really all of my adult life. I um, I'm originally from Illinois, grew up in the Chicago area. I served uh, at Liberty Bible Church in Eureka, Illinois, for 31 years. And uh, during that time, I had a career and uh, I had a corporate career with Caterpillar. I worked uh, 38 years in the IT industry as a manager. Um, but all the while I was there, I was a youth pastor and I worked with youth and worked with, uh, I was a lay youth pastor. We would have 30, 35 kids in our home every Wednesday night. I loved them, worked with them on several things. And I began to see the problem with some of the kids that they were dealing with was addiction to a variety of things. Um, I went I went back to school after 30 some years in the business uh, world at Calvary and graduated. I'm a 2010 graduate. I went back to Calvary in 2009, uh, did it all from home, but I, w I graduated in 2010, walked down the aisle with the cap and the gown on and uh, and said to God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Go wherever you want me to go. God led me 
to just uh, become an associate pastor in my church where I was serving. And when we started that ministry uh, in 2013, uh, uh, we looked around our community, Eureka, Illinois, outside of Peoria. We said that we have addiction addiction problems here. So we began the ministry called Reformers Unanimous. It came out of a church in, in Rockford, North Love Baptist Church, and I was the director. We began that with some faithful people, including my wife, Nancy. We opened the door, and before long, we had 25, 30 people coming every Friday night. We'd meet on Friday night from 7 to 9, and we would share Jesus Christ with the people. We saw some amazing recoveries uh, that Jesus did some wonderful things in the life of people. And as I shared uh, with Sean the other day, we saw some heartaches. I did some funerals for people who didn't make it through their addiction. And uh, addiction recovery has been uh, a, a huge blessing in our lives. I now live, Richard, I live in Castle Rock up the road from you. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, so I am now the director of Rocky Southwest Bible Church Extension, a church planning ministry of the IFCA. And uh, but my heart and my uh, part of my ministry um, soul is in addiction recovery. So thank you for letting me be part of this conversation today. Well, we're we're glad you're here, Tim, and and uh, I'm excited about this because I want to I want to explore this um, from. Uh, uh, you know, a, a biblical worldview perspective. And so my, my basic uh, question is, you know, what exactly is addiction and and how does it how does it relate? How do we approach it from a biblical worldview? And let me add this. Uh, just uh, I guess what I'm getting at is is addiction sin? Uh, we often hear that it's a, a, a disease and um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, I, I think probably uh, we've all heard the idea that that addiction as sin is 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 mocked to, to some degree and and perhaps rightly so. I, I just want to hear from each of you what what is your perspective of what addiction is exactly? Is it sin? Is it something else? Is it a disease? Uh, and 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 how do you view addiction through the biblical worldview? Well. As a as a counselor, and I'm a biblical counselor also, uh, I've always shared with people that are struggling. It's it's simply idolatry. So yes, it is sin. Exodus 20 verse three, God says, "You shall have no other gods before me." So our addiction is placing that desire for whatever it is ahead of our relationship with God, and when we do that, we sin. And you know, in its infancy, uh, infancy, I'd say addiction is really um, emotion emotional choices. And dependency, but as it progresses, very often it becomes really a, a debilitating physical addiction, which then it goes beyond the emotion. It's where you know I need this. So uh, to answer your question from from I guess from a counselor's perspective, Sean, yeah, it's a sin, and you know the addiction runs through our churches as we began our addiction ministry. I wasn't shocked, but I was sometimes surprised at the people that came to our ministry who were leaders in the church and said, I'm struggling with alcohol. I'm struggling with pornography. I'm str I've got a gambling problem. And, and so we have to go to the core. Why have we placed that above God? So yeah, in it's in, in its simple state. Yeah. It's sin. It's idolatry. Mm -hmm. Kelly, I, I saw you I, nod when I you said that. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. Um, I was going to go exactly where, where, where he went with the idolatry, anything that we place, between us and, and the Lord is, is sin. Um, I agree with the, the emotional uh, aspect of it. I actually kind of see it as a defense mechanism um, from our lack of being able to bond. And it's getting to that root cause. Why, you know, why, what, where did that issue with our bonding between God and between our like other people, where is that starting so that we can look at the root cause of that? Okay. Richard, I, I think you nodded as well. Do you you agree with that position? Yeah, I do agree with that. That's exactly what I was thinking too. I mean, I, you know, addictions, you, you know, the Bible says that um, you're a slave to whatever you obey and that you uh, that Jesus saves us from being a slave to sin. And I know for me personally, it became all encompassing where that's what I was living for. That's what was ruling my life. 
I would wake up and I'd be like, what do I got to do to get high today? You know, and you you put that above everything else, your your morals, your values. Um, you get once you get that in your mind that that's what you're going to do. Almost nothing can stop you. And mm. it's I think it's it's really it's lust. You know, um, we always tend to think of lust in sexual terms. But anytime you where you have to have something and you have to have it right now and no matter your no matter the cost, you have to have it. You know, I think that's lust and I think that's what addiction is. And I was actually doing a study uh, where it was talking about guilt and shame and how guilt and shame are manifested into lust and any addiction is a lust, you know, and so. I noticed that people will they'll do things that they hate themselves for that they have shame and guilt about and so then they want to get high to kill that pain from that shame and that guilt but then it's a it's an it's a cycle you do something to hate yourself for so you want to get high because you hate yourself and then you hate yourself for getting high so then you do something to get high and you know and especially if you're uh if you're homeless or you're on the streets you know you do things that you would normally not do in order to get the drugs. And then so it's you're using it as a medication for this self hatred and this uh, guilt and shame that you're feeling, you know, that's and, that's interesting because, um, you know, it's almost as though the addict can only think of one way to be free of the guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, is is more drugs uh, when that's exactly what Jesus offers us is mm -hmm. freedom freedom from the guilt and shame. Uh, well, let me ask this uh, uh, of 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 all of you, um, and I think Tim, you you alluded to the fact that at some point an addiction does become physical. It does it does uh, strongly uh, 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 you know pull someone in physically. So, uh, is there a sense in which um, addiction is both sin and disease? Well, let me go back to my, my counseling roots. Um, I'm always really careful about uh, what we identify as a disease. Uh, sin is a, a disease that affects all mankind, for all have sinned, right? We are all in the same morbid place together, as we're apart from Christ and separated because of our sin. Um, you know, as, uh, as a counselor, you read through the medical definitions of disease and conditions and different things, and that continues to expand, I think, in the current uh, psychological, and I can't, I've got a copy of it in my office over here. It lists over 500 and some conditions that are listed as diseases, and of course, alcohol and drug addiction are listed there. That's man's view. Uh, you know, my view is we are all diseased at some level, and, but the the blood of Christ and the forgiveness and the grace that he offers us in Christ can heal so many of these uh, diseases. Obviously, a medical condition um, can be brought on through addiction that then would alter our lives from a physical perspective. But the initial desire to seek something ahead of God is, is not a disease. That's the sin of, sin of man. So that it's a complicated question, Sean, that it's hard really to answer. You know, I can go to the doctor and say, yeah, hey, I've got COVID. Um, now I don't have COVID. <laughs> now I do have, you know, but uh, as, a, as somebody who is struggling with an addiction uh, purely from the desire and the sinful uh, idolatry, that's not a disease. Okay. Uh, Kelly, anything to add there? I, I, I would agree with that. Um, what we put into our bodies definitely can manifest other physical things. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've known... Um, for, for myself, I had to go through a period of, of really um, healing um, because with all the, the consumption of the drugs and alcohol, there were some definite like misfires going on, if that makes sense. Um, but the, the disease of addiction is cured through the blood of Christ. Amen. Okay, good. Richard, anything else? Um, I mean, you know, there is some physical aspect to it, especially certain kinds of drugs have physical um, symptoms. You know, you can have DTs or uh, heroin, you can have physical withdrawals. 
and you get physically sick when you don't have it. Um, but I think it's more of a mental illness than anything. I mean, um, for example, I, I smoked cigarettes for like 30 years. I was trying to quit for about 10 years and I just, I didn't believe that I could. And then I was praying about it and I, I told God, like, I can't quit. And he said, well, I think you can. <laughs> and then from that moment on, it, it was like a light bulb went off. And I was like, well, I guess I can then if you say I can. And then now I haven't smoked in three months. Amen. You know, and so. It, you know, if. It's like if you believe that you can't, then you're not going to, you know. Hmm. And I, there was a time when I was in jail for four months. And it didn't bother me not to smoke. Because I knew that I couldn't, but about a week before I got out, I really started craving it. And then mm. as soon as I got out, I went right back to it. But for all those months, it didn't even bother me because there was no way I could do it. So to me, that told me that it's a mental state, you know. It's like if, if you believe that an aspirin is going to cure your headache, you're going to take aspirin. But if, you know, if you... If you don't think you need aspirin, then you're not going to take it, you know. That's good. I mean, really, we're, we're very complex creatures, aren't we? I mean, mm -hmm. we're not just, um, you know, uh, minds or, or bodies. We're, we're heart, soul, uh, conscience, um, uh, all kinds of things. So, so it makes sense that it would have a physical component and as well as spiritual component, as well as mental and emotional. Um, let me ask this. Um, is an addict uh, always an addict? I mean, is, does that become their identity once uh, they've been addicted to something? Uh, do they are they going to struggle with that the rest of their lives? And does that does that does that how does that relate to their identity? Kelly, you're 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 saying no. What, uh, jump you know, in. I, I, my is it a part of our testimony? Absolutely. But I don't, it's not a part of my identity anymore. Amen. I'm not a product of my past. Mm. Do I have to have guardrails? Do I need to be aware of the temptations? Absolutely. Just like with anything, um, if I have a, a tendency to overeat and I'm aware that I have a tendency to overeat, then I need to keep guardrails up and, and you know, ask the Holy Spirit to help me in that self-control because that's one of his fruits. Um, mm. Do I want to go into a bar right now? Absolutely not. I'm not going to put myself in a, in a situation where it, it's going to be a temptation right in front of me, but that's not who I am. Okay. Richard, do you consider yourself an addict still? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think really everyone has the propensity to be an addict in uh, for something, you know, whether it's, over watching TV or overeating or drugs or alcohol or work or, you know, we all have things that for whatever reason we're finding um, comfort in or, um, and so I think everybody has that uh, ability or that tendency to be addicted to something, you know, but I mean, uh, uh, as far as my understanding of like alcoholism, is there is actually a, a chemical change in your brain when you drink that makes you crave it. So, but not, not every, you know, some people can control their drinking and some people can't, you know? And I think like Kelly was saying, we all have to be mindful of what we're doing and be aware of the weaknesses that we have, you know, whatever those weaknesses may be. Okay. Can I, can I share yeah, something? Yeah, please. Um, when I was working with so many people uh, in our ministry, uh, we had ladies, my wife, Nancy, and uh, would work with the ladies. And then I would work with the guys. We had other men that would come alongside of us. And a verse and a passage of scripture, we would always share with people. It, and it, I started using it after I went to, I actually went to an AA meeting with one of the men that came to our ministry. And uh, I'm just going to make up a name. His, I'll call him John. I went to the meeting and, uh, and John stood up. Hi, I'm John and I'm an addict. And I looked at him. I thought, no, you're a disciple of Jesus Christ. I know your heart. 
And in 1 Corinthians, Paul wrote in chapter 6 to the Corinthian church, which was struggling with so many things. He says, do you not know the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, or idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, thieves, covet you, and you know the whole list of sin, will inherit the kingdom of God. And then Paul says, and such were some of you. Past tense. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Past tense, right? You were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified. I'm sorry. It's still a huge emotion for me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of our God, you are free. You are serving Jesus Christ. And that's the truth. Well, unfortunately, I'm going to need to stop the conversation there for this week. Uh, it went uh, about twice as long as we had planned. And uh, as you may or may not know, we try to keep our conversations at about 26 minutes because uh, that is uh, apparently the average length of the American commute. So um, the good news is that you're going to be able to watch the, the second half of our conversation next week. But it just uh, we, we just had uh, a great conversation and uh, it continued on for about an hour. And so we we uh, hopefully you can understand that uh, such a, a subject like addiction um, is going to uh, take a little while to to discuss. But I want to end today's program by just saying a couple of things about uh, this very difficult uh, issue and discussion. Uh, we uh, want you to know uh, here at uh, Calvary Conversations, as well as um, Calvary University, uh, that we uh, we love you and we recognize that our view of this subject of addiction and uh, whether or not it's a disease or a sin or whatever is uh, is not the majority view. We understand that. And uh, we also want you to understand that that the people that disagree with us on that, that we don't question their their sincerity or their motivations. Uh, we know that uh, that that uh, position has been reached uh, through care and concern. Um, and so by disagreeing, we're not questioning anyone's uh, intelligence or, or sincerity or even their salvation in Christ. In fact, my, my bet would be that if we could all sit down and discuss it, we would probably agree on a lot. We would uh, certainly be able to disagree that human beings are very complex. And, uh, you know, addiction isn't just a physiological thing. Uh, as we discussed in the program, there there is a physiological component. Uh, but I think we could all agree that uh, we're complex and uh, our emotions, our mental health, and all kinds of things come into the picture. Uh, we would say that uh, our spiritual condition is uh, critical to the conversation as well. And so we, we are convinced, and many former addicts like, like Kelly and Richard, who I introduced you to on the program, um, are convinced that coming into a right relationship with your creator, um, in fact, being saved and receiving the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is, is critical to um, uh, all kinds of uh, mental and emotional health. And uh, it's also the greatest hope any of us has for transforming our lives, uh, regardless of whether we're talking about uh, addiction or, or other kinds of sin. So if you would like to know more about that, um, or if you would just like to participate in this conversation and let us know what you think, even if you disagree, uh, we want you to. Uh, we want to invite you to do that. Uh, you can contact us through the Calvary University website, which is Calvary C A L V A R Y dot E D U, and then uh, slash Calvary dash conversations. Um, and uh, there are there are ways for you to reach out to us uh, via that that web page. And uh, if you would also like more information at Calvary uh, about Calvary University, you can find that information there as well. 
Uh, but we really do want to hear your perspective. And uh, we think that good things come from having uh, conversations about difficult things. And, and uh, of course, we're convinced that the, the, the conversation is uh, infinitely uh, impacted by the biblical worldview. And we'd like to continue to share that with you. So thank you so much for joining us. And, and uh, I hope you'll uh, join us for the second half of our conversation with Tim and Kelly and Richard next week. And until then, grace and peace. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Calvary Conversations, a service of Calvary University in Kansas City, Missouri. We invite you to participate in the conversation by contacting us through the Calvary University website, calvary.edu, or by calling us at 816-322-0110. Join us again next week for another Calvary Conversation.